Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Duke Silver. Today we're going to be trying something a bit different for this tournament video. I'm going to try just recapping the high and low lights of day one and how we managed to scrape by and make it to the top eight. So the tournament has eight rounds in day one, three rounds, then a cut for the bottom 50%, then three more rounds and a cut to the top 16. Then finally two rounds and a cut to the top eight. The points are distributed very top heavy with 10 for a first, eight for a second, seven for a third, 5 for a 4th, 3 for a 5th, 2 for a 6th, 1 for a 7th, and finally nothing for 8th. After each cut, the points are reset, so you get a clean slate. There were a lot of people that took issue with this format, understandably so. It wouldn't have been my first choice either, though I did end up benefiting greatly from this structure. I believe this was mostly meant to keep downsizing the event to make it a more manageable experience for Laralas, who was basically doing all the organization himself with some help from mods, who were also playing in the event or trying to juggle other things as well. That being said, I do hope the structure is reworked for next time to allow for more people to play longer. But yeah, anyways, on to the tournament. Round 1, Game 1. We get a medium-ish first hero select. For me, this is an easy amateur, as you can generally get a tempo treasure on 3 to carry you through the mid-game. Mage treasures are also great if you can get a decent owl start. Um, we start with a couple of Cat Angels and get a Mana Catalyst as our free treasure. Nerfed Catalyst isn't ideal, but it's at least on par with the other tempo options at 4. We pick up a pair of Dachshunds and Farmhands and stay very healthy through the early game. Level 4 nets us a Milk Woman and a Husky Triple, which gets us a nice power spike with Odin's Ravens, adding to our mana pool. We get a bit spicy and pick up a couple Yuck the Axe. Since we aren't spending our mana anyways, it's just some free stats and something we can potentially core fusion later. We get a huge Chameleon Slay into a Haymaker, which we have set ourselves up for with these farmers. Then we add a Monkey for an extra little board buff that'll scale as we add more food generation. We take our 30 health, almost to level 6, but lose to a strong board as we start a transition into Scam. Our level 5 didn't yield any Haymakers, so it's time to come up with a new plan. We do still pick up a Nero, as it's a strong evil unit that goes with our Husky and Haymaker, as well as Scam pieces. We have to fight the High Roller we just lost to for the second time in 3 fights and understandably lose once again, dropping us down to 14. We switch into Freya and triple our Frank which gets us a mimicked Magic Scarf. Not ideal for Scam, but it does give us some more stats once we have more mana for our Catalyst once again. We lose to a very large cat board as Scam does, but stay alive at 1. We get a second Nero which gives us a treasure thanks to Freya's hero power, and we get an Orchestra which is tripled thanks to our Scarf but then I make a huge error. I guess my nerves got the best of me and I grabbed the wrong unit from the shop. I was reaching for a succubus but took a BLT triple by mistake with no time on the clock. Can't even reposition and we go down to the ghost, taking a third for seven points. I feel like we definitely should have gotten second here, so this one feels a little bit bad to, uh, to lose out on. But a third is still a pretty decent start as, uh, again, the, the points are very top heavy, so just like three top fours is, is easily going to be good enough for uh, to move on to the second round. At this point we get some major technical difficulties and have to wait almost two hours for our next round. Eventually we do switch to manual lobbies and get things going again though. Alright round one game two, two hours later. We get another medium hero select with an obvious choice. Fisher King, easily my best hero as far as average results go, so I'm feeling pretty good going into this one. We don't get much tempo in our 3.0 shop and end up trying to get some value from a pirate gunner. I go for a future vision to try to get my level 6 treasure early. We hadn't taken damage yet so I figured it was safe-ish. We take another XP spell, going up 3 XP, and get a magic scarf as our treasure. Not the greatest hit this early, but it can be powerful later. I decided to take a book over a husky and I think that was a mistake. We can't afford to scale with this weak board. Uh, we definitely needed the stats. We get double lightning bolted and lose a second fight in a row, dropping to 16. We pick up a Kiv hoping for some bonus attacks from the royals that we have, but it gets picked off two fights in a row and we take a really fast 8. This one was really rough, but honestly I think the future vision sunk us. I normally cast every future vision I see when I'm playing Fisher King on ladder, but this is definitely not ladder, you just can't get away with losing your rolls. The shops are just so unlikely to give you enough to improve your board at the pace you need to. We walk away with no points here, unfortunately, so we need a very reasonable finish to be able to move on. Round 1, Game 3. We get a couple heroes I'm pretty happy to take in Odysseus and Trophy Hunter, but I think Odysseus is the clear pick. 
Free treasures are just too good. Normally I like to start mages with Odysseus, but we get offered frogs instead, so we of course take those. On 3 we get a choice between Storybook and Chrono Crystal. Now Crystal is great, but we take the Storybook, so every unit we buy from, the, from here on out will have enhanced stats. The Pirate Gunners we picked up are pretty effective with those extra stats, and get through level 3 with no problem. We had a crew member already, so on 4.0 we add a Silent Bell to our treasures. We take a couple Milk Women during level 4, which you will notice is a pattern. Basically my game plan every game is to set myself up for food, and then when we miss on Haymakers I try to transition out. We also get a Magic Bean, which we convert to another Magic Scarf. Again, not the best hit immediately, but probably higher upside than our other choices there. Our Hero Power nets us the Chrono Crystal that we missed out on earlier, giving us a little cushion. This time I tried to set myself up by buying a cat cabinet and praying for Cat Queen. We did find a couple Angelic Commanders, but end up falling to a Fluff High Roller for a fourth year. At this point I'm, I'm convinced that 12 points won't be enough to make the cut and I'm feeling pretty bad about my 8 and my misclick in game 1. But because the points are so top loaded, it turns out the top 50% ended on one of the people at 12 points. Thanks to a 5 way tie and some people dropping, all of us 12 pointers were allowed to move on. So we made it through, just literally literally as uh, <laughs> with as low point total as possible. Alright round 2, game 1. We get a fresh start and a brand new hero select here. Aladdin and Midas both look good to me and I decide on Midas to see if we can bully the lobby early. The cut for top 16 is a lot harsher than top 50% so knocking people out quick sounds very appealing to me. We get a Golden Sprout to start and once again got a Dachshund farmhand combo on 3.0. So starting with a good amount of stats, upgrading the farmhand early is so good, the retain going up to 80% makes it stay relevant so much longer. By the time we hit level 4, we've got an upgraded Dachshund and a board full of good unit synergies, and are feeling pretty powerful. I take a future vision to go immediately to 5, hoping to find a Haymaker, but we burn our rolls and do not find one unfortunately. Level 5 shows us not a single Haymaker once again, so we end up audibling into Kiv and a Golden Galahad, but unfortunately our lack of treasures has caught up with us as we have lost every fight since hitting 5. We find an Arthur, but it isn't nearly enough in the face of a huge slave ward, and we go out in fifth for three points to start the second round off with. So off to a pretty rough start with again a very harsh cut looming. Alright, round two, game two. Another easy choice for me here, Guan Yin the clear standout. Once again, free treasures are very good. We end up getting a Sprout Triple to start with our 3.0 treasure, we get both Strength, Pebble and Farming Tools for a very slight boost in tempo. With a lack of tempo units on 3, we end up taking some damage going down to 21 before hitting level 4. Once there, we get a Magic Bean from our Hero Power and pick up a Romeo Juliet package, and of course a Milk Woman before an XP to go to 5 a turn early. We roll for the Haymaker once again, but once again come up empty handed. Eventually a settling on a Kiv once again to go with our Royals. Our Magic Bean pops with our Hero Power and we get a choice between Philosopher's Stone and Harp. And I opt for the stat buff from the Harp as it gives us a power spike right now. We do eventually find a Haymaker but it might not have been right to take as it wasn't going to be playing right away. We do find a way to get Haymaker in though, with an Arthur on 6, and even find a second one which we unfortunately can't play because of the harp. I did make the decision to get out of harp for the hero mask, which unfortunately does not pay off. And uh, for some reason I end up skipping the selection, this is the first of two times that I did this during the tournament, I think my nerves were just kinda getting to me and for some reason each time I was just, I thought it was uh, exactly the same as, uh, as casting the spell, but... Um, yeah, I, don't, I could have just added uh, added one of the hero powers to my uh, to my hero and and gained some health and and for some reason I just neglected to do that. So, whoops. 
I triple the Haymaker and take a shard and burn it immediately on a Golden Arthur, hoping it'll be enough of a power spike. We are at 17, so we're probably not losing the next fight, but we are falling behind in the lobby. We triple our other Arthur, getting us a Doppelganger Diamond. Although we haven't found much in the way of supports, and this Milkworm and Haymaker package got going a little bit too late it feels. We are holding steady at 22 now, but definitely need some stats soon. Our good boy Triple gets us a Bottled Lightning, a great compliment to our Diamond. I was feeling pretty good about where we were at, but then we come up against a monster of an Angel's board which cuts our HP in half. We pick up a Divine Messenger for another little power spike, but we do need to find more powerful supports ASAP. We lose the very next fight once again to a large Angel's board, and we are out in third, just like that. Certainly not a terrible finish, giving us 10 points total, but definitely not one where I feel secure about my spot going into the final game here. Again, after this round is a cut to the top 16, and people are pretty sure you're going to need 18 to 20 points to make the cut, so that's a first to get in and a second maybe gets you in. Alright, round 2, game 3. Once again, pretty clear hero selection for me, Sinbad has a good early game power as well as late game first place potential, so this is a no-brainer. I end up dropping to 24 because of demons deals and imps, but we don't lose any combats and come into 3.0 with a solid mage start as well as a couple extra gold. We triple our Owl on 3.1 and get an Ice Ring, which I immediately snap off. The double Ice Ring is going to be great for scaling our mages through the mid game here. We end up picking up a late-ish Yellow Bark, which helps us scale our board a bit. We hold steady through level 4 and find an elusive Haymaker on 5. Of course it isn't great on our board, but we take it just in case while also making preparations for a transition into Scam. On level 6 now, we haven't improved much stat wise, but we have a good amount of Scam units now. We just need to find our way into a Dr. Frank. We find Dr. Frank in the next shop phase, as well as a triple for our spider, giving us a weird compass. And we also find an Archdemon to lock, and not a moment too soon, as the other boards are really starting to explode. We are still at 24, our scam board is doing a good job of tying opponents though. We triple our Succubus, and I almost jam a Philosopher's Stone, but realize the Apple Tree goes great with our still active Ice Ring. We are ahead of everyone HP wise, it's just a matter of whether the matchups we want make it to the end of the lobby here. Cats for instance is extremely tough to beat with our setup, so knocking them out here before they get Cat Queens online is absolutely huge. We triple up our Frank and have to choose between Pirate Safe and Battle Song Sword. With how much HP I still have, I opt for the safe, hoping to get a 7 that can finish the game for us, as there aren't many great treasures for Scam on 6. We take a loss to a massive fire mage, but get the ghost fight next, so we have some time to dig for our 7. Our upgraded Frank gets sniped by the ghost scrolls and we manage to lose the fight against the ghost, which of course feels incredibly bad. There goes any cushion for a bad RNG fight against the final opponents. At this point it's possible a second gets me in, but I am convinced I need this win to move on, so it was do or die for as far as I was concerned at this point. We triple our BLT to see our level 7 treasure, finally, and the clear pick is Celestial Shield for me. It is awkward with our ring, but our summons will still get the shield, so we have to take it. We also get a wolf bait to finish out our turn, and get our chair in, and then we just start praying to RNG Jesus. The opponent's Starlight Strike takes out our chair, but the wolf buffer does allow our Golden Frank to survive the Fire Mage. Our shield protected scam units survive just long enough to get their attacks off, and we get the win, locking us up for top 16. Turns out even a third would have been enough, but I had no idea at the time, and it was nice to get my first first of the day. Okay, we made it. Top 16, game 1. Our hero selection is a little less clear this time. Hamster, Aladdin, and Amateur all have their merits, but I decided to go with the Amateur pick again, hoping for some free early tempo to carry me to a top 4. 
I should know for top 16, the cut is to top eight after two games. So we only have to be in the top 50% again. So two top fours should easily qualify. We get a pretty good mage start with an upgraded owl into Merlin's tower, then a broken spell reflector as our free treasure. We don't get much in the way of tempo, taking a couple consties just as a three pair, which turns into a seer sphere. We end up using the tower to double up a future vision with a plowman triple in the shop and I felt like I was in a good enough spot to take it, although in hindsight it makes our spell treasures so much worse since we're seeing so many fewer spells. I'm really relying on my shops to bail me out, and as I said much earlier, the future vision is so, so much worse in these lobbies, because the rate at which these players improve is so much higher than your average, even high MMR lobbies. So I kind of hamstrung myself here, just hoping to get lucky with my shops, and unfortunately, we see a couple really, really bad ones. I tried to get some tempo from a Sea Witch Woman in the Moon combo, but even on turn 9, a 2020 just can't slay, and we take an enormous hit and drop to 5. I went for a phoenix and a merlin, again hoping to get a slay with a fishing rod just for the stats on the woman in the moon. But it just isn't enough and we lose again and end up in 7th, garnering us only a single point. Top 16, game 2. This time it really is do or die, anything less than a first and we won't be moving on. There's no other choice than Sinbad once again here. Sinbad got us there once, so here's hoping he can do it again. We get through level 2 unscathed and pick up a Dachshund on 3.0, hoping to see some farmers in the next shop. We don't find the farmers, but we do triple up our shield page, which gets us a double strength pebble. Not a lot, but 2-0 on everything is certainly not nothing. We come out of level 3 with nothing but a pair of Dachshunds in a cat box, but still pretty healthy. I kind of want to move into cats with the strength pebble, but the relevance on that treasure is fading fast and we don't have a ton of support for it. We triple the dachshund, but skip the treasure. Somehow our very underwhelming board is fending our opponents off though. We end up closing out level 4 with only a single pair and the bare bones of some support synergy. And we do finally get punished for our poor stats. On 5 though, we find Double Haymaker. We don't have the Milk Woman set up this time, but it's still an absolutely great 5.0 turn for us. We take another loss to a pretty strong Fisher King, and drop to 10. But we find our Milk Woman and Haymaker triple, and a High Demon to go with our Symbol of Unity. Another great turn for us, and a really decent Power Spike. Our next shop phase yields even more Haymakers, getting two more in a single shop really setting us up well for food so long as we can survive. We managed to knock out a very scary stealth horde just in time as they were going to start getting very strong if left alive any longer. Then we get our milk woman triple and a merlin to go with it for yet another pretty decent power spike. We replace our fairy with the better version and get to lock a merlin pair. We lose a fight to a strong boost board, but we are still alive at 3. We add a fisherman to our board and it's finally time to get out of this high demon. We tie a close one against a pretty strong cat scam hybrid board, and then we get to triple our second haymaker and replace our symbol. We get the divine messenger, as well as adding another good boy and are feeling pretty safe against the ghost board here. Once again, we have this extremely strong Kiv board to contend with, so I fire off a cup and add the second Merlin plus a Gwyn for a big power spike to our front line, hoping it's enough to contend with the thousand power Kivs. Although they do seem much weaker than the preview led me to believe, and we win by a lot actually. It's possible the duelist I picked had a bunch more supports for their front row, and that just ended up working out really well in our favor. We triple our good boy and get a doppelganger diamond, essentially giving us a second giant golden good boy. Another pig allows us to knock out another powerful good boy player and we are down to a top 4. Because we're fighting against an opponent playing fire mage, I do pick up a monkey. And for those that don't know, when you doppelganger a monkey, its starting stats are counted as 0-0, so we get all those stats immediately on our backline. 
Well, 66% of them anyways. Our good boy gets pigged, unfortunately, but our monkey plan makes us big enough to tank the fire mage and weather all the summons and take out another opponent. We once again have the large boost Kiv board, and they've gotten much larger, but thankfully so have we, with a brand new mage gloves thanks to our fisherman triple. The Kivs just can't handle our good boys bouncing stats off one another, and we win pretty handily. The only other opponent is another Kiv board. We fire off a pig, but so do they, neither of us hitting essential units though, so it comes down to stats, and we have them beat in that regard by quite a bit with our two very large good boys. Alright, down to top 2 against a Kiv board we've beaten quite a few times now. We get a large power spike by core fusioning our Haymaker's food stats onto our Milkwoman, and I bring in my chair as the only way I feel like we can lose is a flying item or a pig on the wrong thing of course. If our Milkwoman gets hit then we lose all our stats, so. They do hit the pig, but it hits Merlin and not our Milkwoman, leaving us with enough stats to take the win at 1 HP and qualify for the top 8. Also you might see a familiar name in there, big shout out to Carol for also making the top 8. So yeah, we did it. We managed to clutch up a first just to, to qualify for top 8. We're kind of like on the, uh, we're kind of hanging on by a thread all day here. And uh, we just managed to, uh, to get the exact re results we needed at the right times here. Again, I know I know people didn't didn't love this format and uh, I kind of benefit from, benefited from it. Like they kind of bailed me out of, uh, of having, uh, I guess, below average scores total, but just winning at the right time. So understand i understand people's frustration but um i mean we all played by the same rules so i want to believe that i deserve to be here just as much as everyone else all right time for the top eight so the top eight is a race format the point structure is still in place but a player has to be live to win the event a player can go live by being above 16 points and once that threshold is passed if you win a lobby you win the event with the rest of the placements determined by points from there even though we took a bad 8th on day 1, I'm still happy to windmill slam Fisher King here. We get through level 2 unscathed with some royals and find a farmhand plus food spell on 3.0. Then a couple of eggs aren't quite enough to keep us healthy going into 4, dropping a fight to Carol. We are still feeling good about our spot though with a bottled ship and now a baby mimic for when we get our free treasure. We just need to remain as healthy as possible. We pick up a pair of Milkwomen, hoping once again for Haymakers on 5, but drop another combat since they aren't great tempo by themselves. We get the choice between Peace of Infinity and Merlin's Lessons, and I decide on the Mimicked Infinity even though it's rarely good, it's early enough that 8-8 per turn is strong enough for at least a couple more turns. We pick up a Kiv as he takes the stats really well, and it goes with our Rapunzel. We then add a couple Scam Pieces and take some XP to go to 6 a turn early. We get heavily rewarded with a pair of Angelic Commanders and a third to lock, which goes great with our Infinity Scaling. Our level 6 treasures aren't especially exciting and I feel pretty strong, so I go for the Pirate Safe with the intention of picking up any pairs we see. Well, we see another Angelic Commander, which isn't a pair but it is extremely good here, but we do end up taking another loss to Carol's very strong Dwarf Board, leaving us very unsafe at 9. Although we do find our Archangel in the next shop phase, which is a huge difference maker, giving our commander 3 extra lives. We triple our Rapunzel and pop our chest, and I need to go with an infusion of stats here, so it's the duckling for sure I think. We just can't afford to wait for infinity to scale us up. We run into another angels player, but our bigger angels dominate them, knocking down the healthiest player in the lobby a bit. Our next opponent has a fire mage we need to prepare for. We lose our Archangel, that could be game over for us. Fortunately, we are able to acquire a chair. And then we even get to lock another commander triple. We win a close one against a very strong mage board and once again just have to take the stats here I think. Once again our opponent has a very large fire mage we need to worry about, but we get a second Archangel. Opponent swapped out the Fire Mage, but even with our wasted chair slot, our angels are just get too many slays and we knock them out. Top 3 now. Once again we have to fight this large mage board, but we are stronger this time and win pretty handily, leaving just Carol and I in the finals. 
I decide to take out the chair, and my logic here is that if she does have a flying item, I can afford to lose one of the Archangels, and then I get to slot in another scam unit to hopefully trade with a dwarf. Fortunately, she does not have the flying item, and we win in commanding fashion. I just add a stealth board to my good tailor in the next job phase, as I think it, if it gets sniped, that like significantly reduces our chances of winning. It makes getting slays a lot harder. But Carol has found a drum roll, giving her a big power spike and switched and switched into a secret hero, which thankfully is not the entrance one. And she gets a tie, clearly getting a huge spike from the drums. I switch heroes myself into Aladdin, getting another instance of the duckling, which is only 25 like attack to everything, but since we throw stats around so much with each slay, that does add up to quite a huge power spike. Carol hides her very large Tempe in the back from my tailor, although I do think that worked against her as I was able to get slays easier in the front row and we managed to get the win. Starting off top 8 with a win is absolutely huge, that's 10 points. So we only need a third to go live from here, only 6 more points total. Okay, top 8, game 2. We finally get a hero select that I have to think about and I end up going with Guan Yin over Herc. I just usually end up in comps that don't care too too much about Herc's hero power. We get a farming tools and a cobbled roads to go with our farmhand and a couple sprouts. We find a bunch of farmhands on 3 and get a milkwoman early on 4, setting ourselves up once again for haymakers. We see a 5 shop early, but unfortunately only find a narc for our troubles. We take a big hit from, you guessed it, Carol once again. And then with our hero power, we mimic a weird compass, surely the haymakers can't hide with a double compass. We get absolutely demolished by a huge dwarf board that's up 2 XP and drop down to 6. We found exactly one haymaker through level 5 after spending a lot of gold rolling so we are pretty weak but we did manage to new you into a golden angelic commander. Unfortunately our opponent is doing angels better than we are and we lose our chrono crystal. I go for a hero mask and whiff hard once again. I chose to skip again for some reason, again I'm not sure why I did this twice but uh... Apparently, I was just too dialed in on other things and just completely forgot that uh, that you just get to add the hero, it's not, you don't need to skip, you at least get like a couple health and a minor hero power added. We unfortunately have to fight Carol once again and she's just too powerful with multiple golden sixes and we take a fifth. That nets us three points which means we need to get at least another fifth to go live after next lobby. Pretty rough one. I mean, going live after the second game would have been uh, would have been fantastic for us, but unfortunately, uh, we did come up a bit short. Okay, top eight, game three. Carol did end up winning that lobby, which made her the only person to be live to win. So there's definitely a target on her going into this one, since none of us can afford to let her win. Another hero select we have to make a choice in. I do like Guan Yin and Bearskin, but I think going for the Sunday Ada Owl Spike is where we want to be. Really good tempo early, as well as gives you some amount of direction, and a great core fusion target later. Not to mention mages transition into scam really easily, so, and we just need a top 5 and to make sure Carol doesn't win, so I think this is a great hero for that. We take some damage from demons deals early, but get a great level, f level 3 shop. Farmhand, crew member, and pirate cook are a potent combo. We sail through level 3 and then pick up a milk woman using her just as an unyielding character who retains food stats for now. We hit 5 just scaling our owls and milk women through 4, and get a mimicked mana catalyst, adding a ton of stats to our board. That does mean we can't really cast spells anymore, but that's okay, I think it's time to transition out of mages anyhow. We end up finding a couple haymakers and have a golden monkey to summon in front of our two milk women. Once on 6, we fail to find much, but do get to lock an angelic commander. Unfortunately the Archangel from our opponent is too much and we take a loss, although we do manage to find our own Archangel in the next shop phase, as we face Ghost Carol. Carol being out and us being top 3 does mean we get one more lobby and we will be live for the next one, so at this point it's just about trying to secure as many points as possible to get one of the cash prizes if we can't win. 
we get a divine messenger, but our milk woman is sniped and we take a big hit down to two. We somehow manage a tie against an absurd angel board. We have to hope one of our opponents take out the other during our ghost fight here, as they are both getting stronger much faster than we are. Also, I did forget my other ascension, so I finally fired off against Carol's ghost on my Gwyn. Since I want to try to triple this Merlin, and getting more stats on the angel seem more important than uh, making it golden. We find a second commander, then triple it into some mage gloves. We have to hope that our opponent hits our Archangel with their flying item since we couldn't find a chair, but unfortunately they snipe the Milk Woman once again and we lose by a lot. With that though, we are live to win in the next one as well as four other people including Carol. So next one is likely for all the marbles. Alright, top 8, game 4. Here we go, it's all or nothing here, so we go for whatever has the most first place equity, and I think that's Phantom here. If we can high roll our heroes, that can be enough to just get there. We take a lot of damage in the early turns, losing to Gold Owl from Sundayata, and taking a Demon Steel to start at 21 going into 3. We once again get the crew member Pirate Cook combo assembled with a farmhand locked, but take a big hit from Carol to drop us to 14 here on 3.1. Our hero selections are not incredible, unfortunately I end up having to go with Damn Gothel and a Duckling combo. I'm already doing crew member things, so I just want the stats from Duckling, and we'll hopefully be able to make use of Gothel as well. We pick up another cook, triple our crew member, and get a Radiant Fairy to throw some stats on. We then find a Milk Woman, and I realize I can summon the Milk Woman in the back, so long as our golden crew member up front doesn't get sniped first. I could have put the other crew member in the back as well, but I really wanted to summon things in front of our food powered milk woman, so I just went for maximum upside here, and it is very effective. On 5, we don't find any haymakers, but we do find a Kiv, which we can also summon with some extra stats. We don't have any royals yet, but it's still range support with uh, the 12 12 extra stats from Pirate Cook. Combat doesn't work perfectly, but our Pirate Cook strategy is still powerful enough that we do end up winning in the combat. We then triple Kiv and consider adding a hero to our combo, but I think the stats are just a lot more enticing here with all of our hand summons. Carol knocks us down to 7, having found some haymakers and monkeys. I considered jamming an archangel, but decided it would take too much work to get rolling, so instead I, I take a roll, and get rewarded with an Arthur and Merlin shop. We switch to a summon chain setup instead of summoning our supports. and our Kivs managed to get there against a very strong mage board. We add a couple Merlins, which of course are royal, so even the frontline one is good with our Kivs. We can't do Uther stuff here unfortunately since he would attack and die a little bit too early, but we still get the extra support stats until the Merlin gets taken out. We manage to beat another strong board, this time it's cats. Then we triple our second give and get exactly the treasure we want in Divine Messenger. We just need to fill our hand with royals now and protect our kivs. Our Arthur gets tailored so we get no stats from it here in this next fight, but fortunately our Divine Messenger stats with our summons are still enough to get the win. We finally get our Merlin triple, which nets us a doppelganger diamond, allowing us to generate another Arthur. We're now playing a chair full time, since the only way we lose, I think, is having our backline taken out.
Our chair does its job and we manage to take down Carol's formidable board. We then add a royal to our summon chain and emperor new clothes, but it's not the best royal, but it does have a shield. We make pretty short work of a triple golden cat queen board and then trade out Emperor for, for another Merlin as well as an Arthur in our summon chain. We win against a dwarf board handily, and now it's down to just Carol and I. And we're both live to win, and I have just enough points that we are locked for first and second. This loppy represents the entire tournament. Well, I mean, as far as first and second go anyways. So whoever whoever wins this wins, and, and the other person will get second. We triple our Arthur, getting a bottled lightning, which is a big power spike. I did have to replace the Chrono Crystal for it. So that made me a little bit nervous, but I think it needed to be done. Carol manages to snipe our only exposed backline unit and grow her angels large enough to take us down, but we aren't dead, we dropped to two. So we just need our chair to catch that attack and we can win, as she was only left with two archangels at the end of that combat, and that other Kiv represents four bonus attacks, as well as a ton of more stats on our backline. Once again, our exposed Kiv is sniped, and once again, we leave Carol with just the two Archangels. That extra Kiv really being the difference. It stung to lose those two 33%ers in a row, but we ended up in second overall, and based on how we limped into the top eight, I can't be too upset with this result. We did all we could, and RNG just wasn't there for us in the end. And I will say, losing to a friend in top two definitely takes some, some of the sting off. Good games to all the competitors. It was stressful, but overall it was a ton of fun to play high stakes matches once again. Huge congrats and shout out to Carol. She played her ass off all weekend and she definitely deserved the win. Thank you all so much for watching. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And also let me know what you thought of this tournament review format. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you soon. Mm, what you say? Mm, that you only meant